Hey guys, I just wanted to hop on real quick to do a video on the Pluto return. Now, there's a lot of information out there about this Pluto return, and to be honest, a lot of it is put out there by people that are not really even astrologers, but I digress. And there's a lot more to it than just Pluto return exact, February 22nd. There's a lot more to it, and those of you that follow astrology, study astrology, or are astrologers yourselves, you know what I'm talking about. It is so much deeper than what appears, and there's a much more spiritual component component to this Pluto return. And so in this video, we're going to break that down. Um, of course, obviously, we're going to talk about the historical meaning behind this and why this is so significant for the for the United States and also for the other countries. And we're going to go into a little bit of the history of Pluto itself and what Pluto as the planet represents, because if the planets pulse through us, right, they, while they're not necessarily responsible for the things that go on, we definitely can put meaning behind events when we look to the planets. Now, I could also argue in this day and age, are things done purposely because of the planetary alignments? We don't know, right? We can argue that till the cows come home. If you asked me that question, if I were around in you know the 1700s and you asked me that question, I would likely say, hell no, <laughs> right? Because we didn't have the outlets we have today and astrology was basically done by hand, tracking the stars literally. There was no computer systems to do it for us. And so back then I would say absolutely not. But in this day and age, we can argue that events are planned around astrology, right? I mean, why, why not? Like, like the good events are planned. I have clients that come to me and they wanna, they're want they doing some sort of specific transaction and they wanna look at their planets, their transits. And it's very, astrology is an amazing, helpful and accurate tool for that. But when we're talking about a bigger level, a grander scale, the collective energy, the collective consciousness even, how does that pan out? Right? So anyway, we're going to break a few things down in this video, but first and foremost, we are going to talk about the Pluto return and what does this significate for us? So I'm going to include the chart of the United States of America, which was born on December, December, July 4th of 1776. It's the Sibley chart. Yes, the United States of America has its own birth chart, if you didn't know that. And that is when the dec the time on that birth chart's 5.10 p.m. was when the Declaration of Independence was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's when the ink was wet on the Declaration of Independence, at least as it's recorded. That is known as the Sibley chart. So we're going to pull that up in a little bit. I'm also going to show you the chart of the Pluto return. But first, let's talk about powerful planet Pluto and what he represents in astrology. As we know, the planets pulse through us and the planets are responsible for specific areas of life, okay? And by their movement and their triggers, we see what plays out. Pluto, powerful little Pluto. So Pluto is a planet furthest away from the sun. He's out there in the ethers. He moves very, very slowly. His orbit, it takes 248 years for Pluto to go around the sun, okay? Full orbit. And so it's two and a half centuries. That's, you know, none of us will have a Pluto return personally, right? You know, the way we have a Saturn return, we will not have a Pluto return unless, you know, they preserve us, which, hey, might, wouldn't be too surprising these days, but um, no, but for real, we will not have a Pluto return. So think about that first. That's, that's significant in and of itself. Pluto was technically demoted to a dwarf planet somewhere in the um, 80s, I believe, if I'm, if my astrology, my Astrology is correct, I don't remember, but in my mind, Pluto is not demoted. Pluto is still very, very much a planet, very, very, very powerful, very, very impactful, and packs a punch in everyday life and in our personal realities, in our personal birth charts, our natal charts. He, we all have a Pluto. We all have Pluto somewhere. And what Pluto speaks to is extreme power because that's what Pluto represents. Pluto is power, Pluto is control. Pluto is um, our compulsions, our obsessions, our fears. Pluto is the ability to be deep and probing. And it's also very psychological. Pluto is like the planet of psychotherapy. He houses things deep underneath the layers of our soul and of our psyche. He's very powerful. He's very psychological. And a lot of times we suppress things because we know that they're there, but we don't want, we don't want to talk about them because they're the things we don't like about ourselves. So this is why Pluto is often referred to as the shadow, okay, shadow energy. But he's also all about death and rebirth. 
So yes, of course, it could be physical death, but it's more often than not metaphorical death, the death of the old to make way for the new. Pluto is that deconstruction to the reconstruction. He asks us, he wants us to rise up and resurrect from the ashes. And the reason I'm calling them the ashes is because when Pluto, when, when anyone is involved in a Pluto transit, a deep cathartic Pluto transit on a personal level, you often don't recognize yourself when you come out of it because it's such a slow moving energy. And I remember one of my teachers many, many years ago telling me, Pluto transits are like having surgery without anesthesia. Okay, think about that because they're so slow moving and you're conscious and aware of what's happening, but it just, it's so deep and it hurts and you're like, oh my gosh, when is this gonna be over? And you know, listen guys, I, I'm typically a very positive person, but I don't sugarcoat anything. And if you worked with me, you know that. I will always tell you the truth. I will tell you when you're primed here in a time period that's gonna be rough on you. And I will also tell you or help arm you with tools based off your personal chart to help you get through that time and to help you navigate that. And that's that's precisely what a Pluto transit can be for us because he is so deep and there are ways to work through it. Anyway, I'm digressing, talking more on the personal level, but that's what Pluto represents. He's power, he's control. He's the breakdown to the breakthrough. He's the deconstruction to the reconstruction. He's the death to the new life. That's not comfortable. It, it, it's The key word for Pluto is permanence. So whatever goes under Pluto is no longer. It's done. Bye, gone. It's dead. Okay? Point blank. There's no going back with Pluto. Okay? So all that to be said, to further this emphasis on the death aspect of Pluto in the tarot deck, for those of you that are familiar with the tarot, or if you're not, in the Rider Waite tarot deck, the traditional deck, the card that Pluto rules over is death. And this is also the sign of Scorpio because Pluto rules over the sign of Scorpio. And so, I mean, look at this card. It's an armed skeleton riding in on a white horse, taking out everything and everyone in its path to clear. Okay, it's a path of destruction, to clear it away. Now, death comes for everyone. It's an inevitability, right? I mean, you see different facets, different walks of life on this card, different types of figures, which goes to show that death is an inevitability of life. And that is what Pluto speaks to. It's that whole permanence factor. Now, Pluto is also about shifts in power and in influence, right? Our own personal power, our own personal control, where we relinquish it, where we hang on to it, where we need to shift it, right? So now again, take this to collective, the collective energy. Take this to the United States where we're having our Pluto return. The birth chart of America has Pluto returning to the, ex well, did already, to the exact same spot, the exact degree where it was when that Sibley chart was first reported, was first brought into this reality, okay? And so again, there's something to be said about a major shift in the power and the influence of our country, okay? A major shift in the old paradigm. This, the old way has to go and the new way will have to emerge. We're under it right now. Now we've been under it. And so this is where, this is why I wanted to do this video because I've been reading a lot of different things of people that have been writing about the Pluto return and it kind of makes it sound sometimes like it's just this quick hit of an energy and that is so far from the truth and obviously if you study astrology at a deeper level or you know it or you know that that's not the case Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008 okay November of 2008 Pluto is still in Capricorn okay today and Pluto will not leave Capricorn officially and move into Aquarius until January of 2024 so that means that Pluto will have been in Capricorn for 16, 16 years, I think I'm bad at adding in my head, 16, 17 years, okay, give or take. That's a long time for Pluto to be in one, for Pluto to be in a sign. So he does this whole slow deconstruction process all the while while he's in his place where he's in a specific sign. And then the sign that he is under is also the energies, the situations where Pluto will deconstruct the strongest because that sign is not a coincidence where Pluto has been. He's been in Capricorn. So what does Capricorn represent? Well, amongst many things, Capricorn is the government. Capricorn rules over chief executives, political positions. Capricorn is ruled by the planet Saturn and Saturn is all about the structure. Saturn is also about restriction and limitation rules, regulations, ambition, discipline, that is Saturn. Saturn's also very karmic. So what we what we reap is what we shall sow. Now, 
Saturn and Capricorn both rule over the skeletal structure. So this is really important. The structure is the foundation. Think about this at a deeper level. When there's cracks in the foundation, eventually, if they're glossed over or brushed under the rug, it's going to come crumbling down, okay? Think of this time as that. Now, at this point, I also wanna pull out the tarot card for Capricorn. So the devil is the card that Capricorn rules over, ruled by planet Saturn. Now, again, I'm bringing the tarot into this because it's all connected, right? So this is about releasing that which binds us, that we feel controlled by, that which we feel entrapped within. This is, you know, thinking about this from the world scale, this could be the structures that we are living under. This could be the energy of what's at work here and what's at play. It's about releasing ourselves from the bondage and the control. And this is on several different levels. And that's what the devil card speaks to. It's about addictions. It's about compulsions, also similar to Pluto in that fashion. And again, when we're dealing with Capricorn, we're dealing with all those issues we mentioned before, all those areas of life that we mentioned before. So again, there's something here about maybe being involved in things that aren't always necessarily good for us on the societal level, on the collective level. I'm talking about the world stage, world power, because we're talking about the Pluto return for the United States. So this is about where we've been greedy, where we've been blind, where we've been stuck or chained or bound like the devil to material items, to material things that we don't need. And that can be coming at us from all different directions. So again, it's just to put a little bit more meaning behind on a deeper level behind what's happening, not to make light of it because it's obviously very severe, but again, from the much more spiritual perspective, there's this huge cathartic process that is happening right now. So Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. And back in 2008, I was part of an astrology group and we would meet every other Sunday. And we would talk about Pluto's ingress into Capricorn and what we all felt it would mean for our future. And none, none of us, nobody really, thought it was COVID to start this whole, you know, which we can argue it's been going on long before that, but nobody thought that it would be to that extent. But we all knew that some something big was coming here. Something big was going to change. There would be a revolution of sorts. And honestly, going back to basics, and some people even thought it would be going back to caveman times, okay? So there's a lot, you know, Capricorn is earth energy. It's cardinal earth. And you know, and Pluto, like I said, it just wants to wipe it all out to build it all back up in a new way and Capricorn's earth. So let's think about this as new earth, okay? And so again, this is not something that has just happened on February 22nd at the date of the Pluto return. This has been underway for many, many, many years, but it's been a slow process. And we've been seeing since 2008 issues of power and control and sexual exploitation and secrets because that's also Pluto's domain, right? Sex, control, you know, exploitation, secrets, all under Pluto. So we've been seeing a lot of that, a lot of exposure, and there's going to likely be more of that as we continue on. Now, that which has been buried is being kicked up. It's being unearthed because it has to be in order to have this new earth, okay, that we all can feel on a very deep level. And again, I will say, I truly believe that as we get to 2024, 2025, and 2026, those are big building block years, okay? So hang tight. It's not easy. And again, you know, we're in the thick of it. And that's just the reality. To, to try and say otherwise is it's futile because we're in the thick of it. So on February 22nd, we had the Pluto return exact, which means Pluto went back to the exact degree where it was July 4th, 1776 in the United States of America's birth chart, which is called the Sibley chart. It's the natal chart for the USA. We're also going to have another exact hit on July 11th, and Pluto will be retrograde at that point, okay? And then again on December the 28th. And then Pluto will dip its toes into the Aquarian waters for a couple of months from March through June, and then he's going to backtrack into Capricorn again until he officially vacates Capricorn and moves into Aquarius in January of 2024. Now, there's lots of different theories going on about this, but I think we can all say it's safe to say that we're going from the industrial times to the digital times, okay? Now, we also can't ignore the fact that in this Sibley chart and also the Pluto return, and let me just pull that up right now, actually, because it'll probably be easier if I show you. Okay, so this is the Sibley chart, which is the birth chart for the United States of America, uh, 7476, 510 p.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And if you look here, Here's Pluto. He's at 2733. 
and he's in the second house. Now this is important because the second house is the house in, the, in a birth chart, in the chart, that rules over finances and economics, okay, amongst many other things. Plus it's also our material items and it's what we own and it's what we've gotten used to hanging on to. And listen, there's no secret here that our country has been greedy in certain aspects and maybe taking things for granted or maybe ha hanging on to things materially that we don't necessarily really need to survive, right? So having said that, now if we go and we pull up the chart of the Pluto return, okay, which is the second chart, which is the outer ring. This is the Pluto, this is the chart for the Pluto return. You see Pluto here, exact, 2733, okay? Here's the natal Pluto. So it's, it's right here, okay? Is that exact position, second house, world finances, economics, power, control, exploitation, um, taking away the old to make way for the new. The old structures must collapse so that the new ones can be reborn, rebirth. This is Pluto, okay? Now, let's also mention here that the south node, which if you follow the theory of evolutionary astrology, which I do, the south node of the moon is also connected to past karma that we've accrued. And so the south node says... Okay, um, this is where we're coming from and we want to release something here. And the south node here is in Aquarius and it's, you know, it's an out of sign conjunction to this Pluto in Capricorn. But again, there's something here that says release the greed, right? Go back to basics. We cannot sustain the old way. We just can't. It's just not possible. So this is very significant. And, you know, again, think about, think about this. Think about the death card. Think about, you know, stripping away the old to make way for the new. That is with that is what Pluto, that is what the death card speaks to. So again, there's this big emphasis on the Phoenix rising before our country. So everything I said about Pluto, take that and apply it towards the United States of America, okay? This is the major shift in our nation's power and influence. And how is that gonna go? We don't know yet, right? We're in the thick of it right now. But I don't think it's, I think we have to all recognize, and I'm sure we all do, that there's something big at work here. There's something bigger at play. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying astrology is responsible for it. I'm just simply saying that when we look at this, we can see these power dynamics that are consistently being unearthed day by day by day by day. Now, I also have to mention Neptune's role in these charts, okay? Because this is a big deal. Because remember, the shadow side to Neptune is that this is where we can be deceived and this is where we can be walking on the clouds or thinking everything is fine, but it's really confusing or under this web of you know fog where we just don't know. So let's look at the, in the Sibley chart, which is the birth chart of the US, Mars is here at 21 degrees of Gemini. Okay, see this? Mars at 21 Gemini. In the chart of the Pluto return, Neptune is here at 22 degrees of Pisces. So it's almost in an exact square. Square aspects are frictional. They, they, we, it's something difficult for us. It's challenging for us and really hard to see eye to eye with this type of an aspect. It produces tension. Now, Neptune squaring Mars speaks to confusion. So we're speaking to confusion around the image of our country. Now, furthering that is that the natal Neptune, excuse me, the, the Neptune in the birth chart of the US is at 22 Virgo right here. Now, this is opposite the Neptune in Pisces in the Pluto return chart at 22 Pisces. So it's almost in an exact opposition. And so again, this is all about the nation's image and this speaks to distrust. This also speaks to our nation's distrust and suspicion of the government, of the press, of corporations. It's at an all time high and that's likely going to continue to increase. So pretty interesting stuff, right? Now, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens as we move towards the age of Aquarius more and more and more, because once Pluto enters Aquarius in 2024 officially, oh, let me backtrack a moment. This is also very important. So Pluto is at 27, um, what degrees? He's at 27, 30, I, I don't even know, 27 something, sorry, today. When he, we know when planets get to the 29th degree, okay? That's that anoretic degree. It's very significant. It's very ramped up, okay? And because Pluto moves so slowly, he will be at that 29th degree for quite a bit. So he goes over some difficult terrain and some difficult territory. So, you know, are things going to ramp up? They might, you know, I mean, who's to say they won't, right? The energy is pretty intense right now. And um, the astrology is sort of, you know, showing us where this could be headed. 
But he does this dance, Pluto, because he goes forward and then he backtracks and he moves into Aquarius. He gives us a glimmer of what could come. And again, what's Aquarius? Aquarius is the sign of the future. Aquarius is an innovative air sign that speaks to robotics, technology, science. It's the evolution of science and technology, also society. And of course, again, we can't ignore the finance aspect, you know, the whole digital component that we've been hearing so much about. So we'll likely see a lot of breakthroughs in these areas. But then Capricorn will backtrack, I'm sorry, Pluto will then backtrack into Capricorn. So we may make a little bit of progress and then we may go a little bit backwards before we really truly progress. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, stay strong, maintain your faith, have hope, be optimistic. If you've never looked into growing your own food and it's something you've always wanted to do, you may just wanna start doing that from now, okay? Things are shifting. No doubt about it. You know, Uranus has been in Taurus since 2015 and will be in Taurus until 2026. So what is the significance of Uranus in Taurus? Well, Taurus is a fixed earth sign and Taurus is very slow moving and methodical and doesn't typically love change, especially unexpected change. And that is what the planet Uranus represents. It is just change beyond. And it comes in sometimes out of nowhere like a freight train and Taurus doesn't really like that. But beyond that, Taurus is the Earth sign that rules over literally the Earth's resources. It's our food supply. It's our physical body. It's the Earth. It's the air. It's not the air. It's the Earth. It's the soil. You know, so again, like I mentioned, if something you've been wanting to do is gardening or growing your own food, you may want to look into that right now. Uranus has been doing a number with the weather patterns that we've been experiencing. Um, we can see a lot of, of different things happening along with this Uranian theme. And so you never know if that could do something to the food supply, right? So it just may be more helpful, you know, in case there's shortages, which we've seen a lot of already, there might be more. So with Uranus and Taurus, again, getting back to basics in some kind of capacity and just, you know, doing what you can, doing your parts so that you have some of your own resources accessible to you, just if and when you are not able to go to the store or you're not able to get a delivery or whatever the case may be, you have something for a rainy day, okay? You have your own little uh, potted plant of basil or your or lettuce that you grow or microgreens or whatever it is. It's likely, you know, it's not a bad idea to enlist in that. That's all I'm saying. So we can look at the Pluto returns as the rise of power and the fall of empires. Now, the Roman Empire, they actually had two Pluto returns, okay? The first one did not really collapse them. The second one was where they had a problem. England actually survived three Pluto returns, okay? So these, this does not mean it's the, dis, the complete destruction of a nation. It just means that it's, it's a huge time of transformation and upheaval. So that, that we can count on that for sure. We know that. Now, I won't go into all of that here, but if you want to know more about that history with the Pluto returns for both the Roman Empire and England, I'm going to I link that article below. It's a pretty good article. I think it's from astro.com that goes into more detail about those errors and about what was experienced at those times, which you probably, if you're a history buff, you probably know this already, but you obviously might not be tracking this back to Pluto return. So this will be an informative read if this is something you'd like to research further. Now, again, not to make this a whole tarot lesson, but I couldn't help but bring the cards into this video because I felt like it was really significant for the times that we are living under. So speaking of the sign of Aquarius, the card that rules Aquarius is the star. And the star is all about renewal and rejuvenation and healing after a time of potential illness and or distress. And again, this is speaking to the nation, our nation, okay? This is what this talks about. A time of renewal, filling back the cup. The earth is the earth's natural resources being replenished. Look at all the water in this card, okay? It's also equally important to mention that this the star follows the tower which is ruled by Mars and Uranus. And the tower speaks to, again, destruction and the clearing of the path. But this is before the star. So I always say that the tower is the calm, is the storm, right? And then the star is the calm after the storm, okay? And so there's something here to say that sometimes we have to go through this destruction process to get to the renewal 
to, to restore our faith, our hope, our optimism. And remember, stars can seem very distant. So this may seem like a distant possibility right now, but it's still very much a part of the order here, okay? The order, the divine order. So please keep that in mind as we move along throughout these times that we're under because they are very stressful and extremely intense. I feel like I went all over the place with this. I did not have any kind of format to this. I just wanted to come on here real quick and talk about this because I've been getting kind of frustrated when I when I hear all these things about the Pluto return and it's it's been this ongoing energy and it is continuing. We are moving, we are cruising, we are changing. And again, when it comes to the personal life, again, look at what you can release, the attachments that you can let go of. The North Node's in Taurus right now, collectively. The South Node's in Scorpio right now. So again, this speaks to going deep into our psychological stuff, our psychological dungeon, right? Having our own psychotherapy sessions with ourself and looking at those old habits and compulsions that we've been suppressing or hiding away for far too long. And Taurus, as the North Node, is the safe harbor for Scorpio. And Taurus is saying, it's okay, you know, come here, come in this direction, we'll heal, we'll heal together. And so think about that also for our country, for the United States. There's something here about having psychotherapy for our nation. And that's where we're at right now. And that's never fun. Take really good care of yourselves. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you receive more updates. Also, you can subscribe to my newsletter on my website, lisasalvatore.com. And I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye.